Hello, my name is Joan Gibbons, and I am with the Security Product Success Team. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the essentials of vulnerability response, uh, the initial configuration. Uh, before we do that, here's just a safe harbor notice in case we're going to talk about anything um, that may not um, be released yet. Uh, the topics that I would like to cover today, uh, right, are the um, any prerequisite tasks that are needed to uh, install vulnerability response and configure it. Um, we're also going to be utilizing the setup assistant uh, to do this configuration. Um, utilizing the setup assistant, uh, you can go ahead and assign roles, uh, work on assignment rules, uh, work on remediation task rules, the calculators, the remediation target rules, and you can also, of course, configure the integration as well. Uh, so we'll be covering all this in a demo today, but um, let's go ahead and jump into some topics here. Uh, so as far as prerequisite tasks, the main thing that we need to do uh, is we need to make sure that the following plugins are installed, uh, right? Obviously vulnerability response that will also include any of its dependencies, um, the vulnerability response integration with NVD. And of course, we need to have some kind of a scanner plugin. Uh, so today we're going to be using the Qualys integration for security operations. Um, to install any of these plugins, you, you do need to have the admin role or you need to have your system admin go ahead and install these plugins for you. Uh, to, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use the setup assistant um, to go through and, and set up uh, all of these elements. You, you can get most of what you need through that setup assistant. Um, you can also just go directly through the modules, uh, but this kind of puts it all in one place. It's easier to navigate through it. Um, so uh, in order to do to use that setup assistant, you will need to have the vulnerability admin role uh, to get in there and use that. Uh, so the first thing, right, is assigning the roles um, to VR personas. Uh, so it's important that you, you have these discussions with, with the customer uh, and make sure that you understand how their, role, how their users are going to be distributed amongst these personas. Uh, so the first one, obviously, is the vulnerability admin. Uh, that vulnerability admin uh, user is users uh, is going to have access to the entire VR application and all of its records. Uh, the next one is you have a vulnerability analyst, right? Users with the with the with with that role uh, can view and update all records for the VI remediation. Uh, the next one is the remediation owner. Uh, users with the remediation owner role. Um, essentially can, can work on any of the vulnerable items that are assigned to them or a group that they belong to. Uh, the next one that, that's not really talked about too much is the CI manager. Uh, users with that role uh, can manage the unmatched configuration items uh, with, uh, within, the, within the tool. Uh, the next one, uh, right, is the exception approver, right? And these users have the ability to approve exceptions, deferrals, and the closures of remediation tasks and vulnerable items. Uh, if you are going to assign users directly to the groups, you will need to have uh, a system admin or a user admin role to do that. Uh, so just some basics here. Um, so assignment rules, right? They're used to automatically assign vulnerable items uh, based on based on whatever criteria you you choose. Uh, there are three different types of um, assignment rules, right? There's there's one that allows you just to use a static user group, uh, right? So you could pick one group to assign um, whatever section of vulnerable items to, right? This is most commonly used as a, a default rule, right? So any, any vulnerable item that doesn't meet any kind of assignment criteria, uh, you can have it always go to a default group. That group can then go ahead and figure out either do we need to adjust the rules do we need to create a new rule, so on and so forth. The next one uh, is to use a, a user group field, right? And so this usually is used um, to grab a, an assignment group off the CI record, right? It's usually supported by, uh, but allows you to use whatever values in that field. And the last one is a script, right? And this allows you to, to write a script to go ahead and, and do some more kind of complex uh, assignment logic um, and then use whatever values you want to in that script. All right. The next thing is the remediation tasks. 
right? These uh, help analysts and remediation specialists um, organize vulnerable items and in, in, into a logical grouping uh, so that you can analyze those things in bulk. Um, you you can configure the criteria on on how the vulnerable items are going to be grouped uh, and also assigned as well. Uh, the good thing about remediation tasks. Um, it just it allows you to monitor the progress and drive the remediation process more efficiently, right? You're, you're looking at one record instead of thousands of records. So it's, it's a very handy tool uh, for the analyst to use. All right, the next thing is vulnerability calculators. Uh, essentially, there's two types of calculators uh, that are available in the system, right? These allow you to go ahead and um, determine what the risk is, right, based off, off of any CI attributes or user attributes or, or whatever, you know, vulnerability attributes that you want, um, right? As I mentioned, you, you have the advanced risk calculator, uh, right? You can use um, right CI exposure or business criticality or severity uh, to help drive that. Uh, and then you also have a basic risk calculator um, that you can essentially just use a range of severity values to, to go ahead and uh, assign that risk. Uh, the next thing is remediation target rules, right? Remediation target rules uh, help analysts and remediation specialists um, understand what the remediation time frame is. It's, it's, a, it's like an SLA, uh, more of a light version of SLA. Um, but uh, it's very handy. Um, you can use these things to help send notifications when you're about to breach your, your target date. Um, so uh, very, very handy to use these. And then, uh, you know, last but not least, you can use the um, integration configuration pieces within the setup assistant to go ahead and configure your integration. Uh, for some integrations, you do have to go through the setup assistant to pick certain attributes. Uh, but today, we're, we're going to be using Qualys, and we, we can do almost anything we need to within that setup assistant. Uh, it does also provide you some base CI lookup rules that you can use to go ahead and um, and do that. All right. So let's jump into the demo here. So you can see here, uh, right, the first thing we've got is vulnerability response. Um, if we go and take a look now, I've already installed the plugins here. Uh, but if we take a look, right, if we go to and look for vulnerability response, right, you can see I've got a bunch already installed here. Uh, I've got the NVD integration installed, the vulnerability response integration installed. You can see it's got all of its dependencies listed here. Um, and then if we go ahead and take a look for the Qualys integration, uh, right, you can see we've also got the Qualys integration for security operations. So there's our prerequisite tasks out of the way. Um, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the setup assistant here. Give this a minute to load. So here you can see, right, if we, we haven't done anything yet here, uh, and you can see pretty much everything that we can do. Uh, if we dive into the vulnerability response users and groups, right, you can see here uh, that I have the ability, right, it tells me what the personas are. Um, I have the ability that I can assign these roles out to a group. Uh, obviously, this is a more preferred way to do this versus assigning individual roles to individual users. Um, the, the other thing too is there are some groups that are included out of the box. So if you do need to take a look at some examples here, right? there are vulnerability groups with the associated roles already configured. Uh, you don't have to use these, most customers don't, uh, except for maybe these two, um, but right, they don't really use them for anything else. The other thing to note, too, is uh, we talked about the remediation owner role here. Uh, keep in mind that this thing is associated to the ITIL role. 
So anybody that has an ITIL role already has this remediation owner role. Uh, so you shouldn't need to do any more configuration unless you have a specific group of people that you want to track it in a different way. Okay, so obviously, right, if we want to go ahead and, um, you know, application development, let's say we're going to go ahead and, and give these people the vulnerability analyst role. Okay, so you can see you get a little message here that that's done. Uh, right, so you can go through and you can do all these uh, that way if you, if you want. Uh, so the other thing here, um, right, you can go in here. This is just telling you to um, write, essentially do the prerequisite task, right? We already installed all the plugins. Uh, the next thing here, right, is obviously the vulnerability assignment rules. So you can see um, it's going to be opening up the assignment rules that are there. Now, there is one that's already there, right? This is assign it to the CI support group. But if we wanted to do a new one, um, right, we can go ahead and select that here. Let's just make a default rule. All right, we'll give this, uh, we'll make this one run, la run, run last. Uh, right, we're not going to put any conditions and we're just going to assign it using a user group. Uh, and if we pick, uh, Right, we're going to pick the vulnerability analyst role. Um, right now, at the end, uh, as you go through these, right, you can mark this complete, just kind of to to track where you're at, right. So I guess I could have done that up there as well. Uh, right. So the next thing is remedi remediation task rules. Right now, out of the box, right, there is one that's already doing that. If we take a look at that one here. we can see that it is going to be grouping it by the vulnerability. Now it takes a minute to open. All right. Um, you can see the right, this is not active out of the box right here, right? But it's going to be looking for any vulnerable items that are active. Um, Right, it's going to group it by the assignment group and then the vulnerability, and then it's going to group it by whatever assignment group that was that was used in the condition up here. So uh, again, right, you can go ahead and create new ones. You can change this one, uh, and once you're done, right, you can mark that as complete. Uh, risk calculators. Let's take a look here. Again, you know, it gives you some good descriptions of, of what, what you're doing here. Obviously, if you need more information, you can go to the doc site. Um, so, you, right, you can see here we've got we've got two different types, right? Only one is active. You've got a default one, uh, right? This is going to use multiple values, severity, exploit availability, skill level, so on and so forth. Uh, but you also have a basic one that you can uh, just use the vulnerability severity, right? Uh, and, and use that. So um, a lot of customers will will usually start off with uh, at least the default one, uh, unless they already have an existing risk calculation process within the organization that they want to implement here. And so in that case, you would just go ahead up and set up a new rule. Uh, remediation target rules, right? Uh, again, these are um, a light SLA, if you will, for vulnerable items. Uh, they do not include one out of the box, but if we wanted to go ahead and create one, right, we could go for critical uh, vulnerabilities, right? We're going to give um, we're going to give 10 days for criticals, right? Now this is going to be the last opened, right? We're going to notify seven days before it's due. Let's notify two days before it's due, right? Obviously, we could say risk rating is critical. And then we could go ahead and define, uh, you know, whatever uh, group that we want to notify. Go ahead and submit that. And now we have a remediation target rule. Now, the next thing here is the scanner integration here. So, right, we can come in here. You can see that we've already got quals installed, right? If we come in here to do an edit, this is where you'd go ahead and put in your credentials, right? Um, 
oh, right, we're going to go ahead and pick any of the uh, the knowledge base support, right? When do we want it to run? Um, you know, you can do any kind of advanced settings in here. And you also got the host detection, right? So from here, you can choose what severity levels you want to bring in, right? When do you want to start, right? Do you want to do a backfill? Maybe go back a month, two weeks, whatever it may be. Do you want to pull in any fixed vulnerabilities? Um, typically, it kind of depends on, on what the customer is going to want. But um, typically, we don't do this unless they have a real need for uh, generating any kind of report history. Right? Uh, do we want to bring in the Qualys asset tags? That's usually something that a lot of people will use. Right? We could also enable the uh, lookup by network partition as well. And then, right, we can also include some, any additional metadata, right, kernel or service or exploitable. Right, uh, you can see here that there are some CI lookup rules included with this to get you started here, right? There are seven of them, uh, right? So um, it, this will give you a good start uh, to kind of see how this can align to what your existing CMDB data is, right? And obviously, if you need to make any adjustments, then Right, you're probably spending most of your time here in these three. And then also, right, any kind of schedules, um, you know, typically uh, you probably do this more from, um, if you go into Qualys here, uh, if you go into the primary integrations here, right, if you need to kind of do some more staggering of how these integrations are going to run, Right, then you would go into each of these and 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 figure out what you know when you want them to run. But if we take a look here, um, so you can kind of get a good idea, right? So these are already pretty much staggered for you. But again, right, it kind of depends on what other integrations you have running in your system, and you may want to adjust these. Okay, so that concludes the demo today. Uh, so let's take a look at what we've learned today. Uh, right, some, we learned about configuring vulnerability response, uh, any of the prerequisite tasks, and also utilizing the setup assistant to um, help configure assigning roles, assignment rules, remediation task rules, vulnerability calculators, remediation task rules, and configuring the integration. All right, I thank you for your time today, and have a good day.